how to use deep research from perplexity to write extremely high valuable SEO blog posts that will help you rank. Deep research from perplexity is much like deep research from OpenAI and even Google, except it's free and it is practically just as good, if not almost the same as OpenAI's deep research. But we can take this a step further with our content and use that research with a very tailored prompt, which I'll show you where you can get access to, to write extremely high valuable content for your audience that's going to help you rank. You see, the idea is to use the result from a deep research because we can export all the research into a PDF. This allows us to then use that PDF and give it to another reasoning model, let's say OpenAI's O3 Mini or even DeepSeek, with a particular set of prompts that is going to make this extremely valuable. It's not just a prompt to say, hey, turn this into a blog post. No, that won't be enough to rank and actually provide value. We're going to tell it to then write this blog post from a certain perspective and think about writing the blog post for a certain audience and this is the most important thing. Make sure you incorporate a personal experience. This is going to separate your blog post from everybody else's, adding a lot more value to it and something that Google really likes, adding your own personal experience into these blog posts. The end is going to be a blog that is going to look like this, not only with the research that Perplexity found Forest use in a natural manner, backlinking to the contextual keyword, but also some tables that are going to add some value or supporting content to the blog post so it's not just text heavy. Is this blog post ready to be published right away? Probably not. I would recommend you reading it and also perhaps adding some additional illustrations from something like napkin.ai or even some images with Google FX. But let's get started right away. First, obviously, we need the topic that we want to write about. And I would like to I would like to research what are the latest strategies and prompts to make GPT sound very human when writing and what are some prompts that we can use with ChatGPT that's going to help us to write really high quality SEO content. You'll need an account with Perplexity and you get three free deep searches a day, which is more than enough for what we want to do. I've asked it here, I want to learn the latest strategies and prompts that help ChatGPT sound more human. I also wanna know some effective ways to use ChatGPT for SEO when it comes to content writing for SEO and overall SEO research prompts and use cases. Now I'm going to go deep research. Make sure that you have that enabled. It's not gonna be enabled by default. We're gonna go to hit enter. Now, essentially you could continue writing the blog post within the same chat of perplexity, but I find that it isn't the best for some reason and I prefer using it with uh, O3 mini in a chat with in a chat inside GPT. You could use the same prompt with things like DeepSeek R1 or any other reasoning models. Maybe Google will work really well for this. Whilst that's doing the very deep research, I'm gonna show you where you can get the prompt that I'm using for this and how you need to amend it to suit your needs. A little bit of work goes a long way. You're gonna click on a link below the video description and it's gonna take you to this page here that says deep research blog writing prompt, right? And you're going to click on this link there. It's gonna take you to this page and what you need to do is file and make a copy because you're only going to have view access. Once you have made a copy, make sure that you go through the prompt to understand what it is that we're trying to do because this is something that's going to make this research and this blog post really high quality. You need to fill out everything that's in these brackets, the topic, the perspective, the audience and the personal experience. That's perhaps the most important thing here. Let's go back to the research and then see how we can fill this out. You can see that it's still going and that we've gone through 55 resources. It's quite amazing. The difference between deep research and normal search is that the normal search from perplexity, which is great, just kind of finds the first few topics and then distills all that information in one conversation. Deep research acts like a professional research assistant where it finds information and then, then digs deeper into a certain aspect that it deems appropriate to do so to give you more value. And it does this whilst reasoning when it finds that new piece of information, sets another plan accordingly and understands, well, I should probably do some more research on this component because that might be useful. It's something that if you look at what it does, it will take you 
hours, if not days sometimes. I'm really impressed by the quality of the output here, particularly considering they're giving you three free searches. Uh, AI is moving way too quick and I want you to make sure that you're leveraging it for your SEO. So perfect, it's still writing and it's telling me strategies and applications for human-like GPT writing and SEO optimization. Okay, perfect. Now, whilst that's writing, I wanna do some additional research here because I wanna make sure that I've got a correct structure for this blog post. And the structure is essentially, I want to answer one question that people are asking about ChatGPT or this topic in detail. I can you do this by going to Google. I can also go to people also asked and understanding what you want to write about in relation to the research. I'm just going to say uh, chat GPT natural set natural tone and I'm going to do a live search. This is going to show me what all the frequently asked questions about chat GPT natural tone that are being asked in the United Kingdom. Probably should have done United States, but it doesn't matter. And here's a question that people are asking that I really want to answer. How to make ChatGPT sound more natural? Perfect. Now I can go back to my prompt and start filling this out. So I've got my uh, prompt here. And then in the topic, I wanna to place that question. How to make ChatGPT sound more natural? Now, the blog should be well-structured, engaging, highly informative, and written from a perspective. Which perspective do we wanna take here? So written from a perspective of helping us use ChatGPT to get higher SEO results, for example. The audience here is going to be SEO agency owners or small business owners doing their own SEO. And this is the most important one. You need to think of a personal experience regarding this topic. For example, I know that sometimes I will uh, speak to ChatGPT or get Otter AI, which is another great tool, to transcribe my speech and ask GPT to copy my tone of voice as closely as possible. And this gives me a fairly close perspective of what my tone of voice is. And you can see that I've really kind of fleshed this out, but it's important you do that. The more you flesh out your experience and everything else for that matter, the more incredible your blog post is going to be. So I wanted to incorporate my experience of using Otter AI to transcribe my thoughts on a topic and ask GPT to copy my tone of voice from the transcription as close as possible. This gets ChatGPT to sound very close to my tone of voice. That's my personal experience. Google loves that because it's something that not many people can do, my personal experience. Perfect. And now I've got the blog with the prompt ready to go. Before I do though, I need to get the research from Perplexity. I'm gonna go back to perplexity. I want you to read that research. It's important that you do that so we get the most out of this. But I've read it and I'm really happy with it. What I'm going to do though is export the button as a PDF. The good thing now is that ChatGPT 03 Mini can take PDFs as an input. So I'm going to go to GPT 0 Mini. I'm gonna start a new conversation. I'm going to give that new PDF to 03 Mini. I'm gonna to go to my prompt that I've just made in detail for this conversation, copy this whole thing and go into 03 Mini, paste that and hit enter. Now that took a little bit of time, but a little bit of preparation goes a long way here. You don't have to write every single one of your blog posts like this, but putting a little bit of effort like we just did in some of them will really make a difference. So we've got here how to make GPT sound more natural. I've got an introduction here. As AI generated content becomes increasingly prevalent, the need for natural conversational tone has never been greater. I don't mind that. Understanding natural language in GPT. And here is the beautiful thing of this. It's integrating the links that it's used for the research naturally throughout the blog post. If I click on that, I go to the contextual blog where it got that information from. It's even got some tables here. Um, and some more stuff here, another few tables, incredibly. Chat GPT SEO prompts, I love it. This is really, really good stuff. Now, how can I even improve this and maybe add another sense of realism or make sure that it doesn't sound so 
kind of AI-ish, which is ironic considering the topic that we're writing about. You can go back to our online school community. This is free, by the way, AI Ranking School. I'll leave this uh, in the prompt below. And within one of the sections that's called Blog Writing Prompt for Canvas, there's a section that says here humanizing GPT with negative keyword phrases. This is another little trick I like to do. So if you place this into the prompt, for example, I'm just going to change it here and see if this is gonna change the writing because I don't like the beginning that says in today's uh, digital landscape in the beginning, that's kind of classic um, AI writing. So I'm just gonna place that negative keyword list at the bottom and you should have your own negative keyword list. I encourage you to do so and place more keywords in there as you start writing with AI that, that you don't really like it using. And you can then place that negative keyword list in any AI model and it should follow it. So now let's give it a second and let's reread the rest. Okay, now I'm liking this introduction. The other one was kind of in the ever evolving world of, and this one is, if you're an SEO owner or a small business trying to improve your search ranking as a young, you might wonder how to make your own AI generated content feel more human. Perfect. It's still hyperlinking to the research. Fantastic, I like it. This is Unreal, it's creating us a table. Now you can copy this, place this in your website, but again, make sure you read it and you're happy with it. There's two additional things that I believe you should do is add supporting illustrations if you can. Uh, for example, let me show you here. You can copy a section of the blog post. You can go to napkin.ai. This is a free tool, at least as of the time of this recording. It might be paid soon, but it's one of my favorite ones. I'm gonna press new napkin, blank napkin. I'm gonna paste what I've copied from the blog post, select everything and place and click that button. This is going to give me a illustration that I could place below this section or above this section. And I've got a few options here. This one looks great and I can change the styling if I want. And I can then download this as a PNG and place it in my blog post. Just a little tip here, don't place the PNG in your website. Make sure you convert that image to a WebP file that's nice and light. So I can download that and place it into the blog post. And with that, I have done pretty deep research about a blog post. I have written a blog post from my own perspective, providing my own opinion and my own experiences. So it's a really high quality blog post, whichever way you look at it. You don't have to write every single one of your blog posts like this, but every now and then this is really, really good. Again, if you like this type of video, make sure you subscribe and like this video for more. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thank you very much for watching.